So let's talk about one of my agency clients. We got them 80,000 followers in three months on Instagram, and I'm going to walk you through just some of the main takeaways as to how we made this possible. So you'll see here, this is actually something we used in a case study where we would actually send this out as a lead magnet, our free offer to get clients for my agency. Um, so you'll see here, it said how we helped the supplement company gain 81,000 431 followers in just three months and up to 800 website visits every week organically without any paid ads. And then we had a screenshot of their page. I've blurred some of the details for now, but let's get into it. So month one, month two, month three, they started at 83K. So that was a big advantage. Let's be real. If they were starting at 80 followers, it would have been much harder to gain them 80K. This definitely helped. Um, you'll see then we got them to 164 over three months. So let's look at it. For feed content, we posted infographics mainly. Probably 80% of the content was infographics. Why infographics? They are really educational, which means people would save them a lot. Like they'd literally use the save feature on Instagram, but also really shareable. Um, this business that you'll see here, it's vegan. Okay. Uh, the reason that's important is because a lot of the content we made was very potentially controversial. So for example, there might be a recipe showing, um, you know, a high protein recipe for a vegan, like obviously a vegan meal, which obviously as a vegan person, you might want to share because you might want to show to your followers, the people, you know, maybe your friends, your family, that you can get vegan on a, or you can get protein on a vegan diet. Cause that's like the big common myth. So that's just an example of how we would use like those psychological factors of controversy to improve the content we made. We would also post, you know, YouTube and podcast clips to shorts. So we would basically clip up uh, stuff of where one of the founders was speaking. Um, again, he had a bit of notoriety in the space, which helped because if they saw his face on the page, that would definitely help boost up the views as well. So we really leveraged that where we could. That was mainly it for the feed contents. There were some others, but those were like the main, main drivers you know we had infographics get thousands and thousands of likes and grow the page exponentially then with captions we would typically just ask a question then give more value relating back to the piece of content so if it was like let's say the protein recipe might be do you how much protein do you eat a day or have you died yet of a protein deficiency on a vegan diet again tapping into those psychological things that would create controversy then the value would be explaining here's how you make the recipe, the step by step, what's included, la di da. And the end, we would typically try and put a call to action. Either follow us for more content like this or a call to action to a free offer or a paid offer. So these guys sold supplements, but they also did like fitness challenges. So we'd often say, oh, by the way, we used our protein powder from at our supplement company. Go buy that here. Or um, you know, we're starting a fitness challenge in three weeks from now, sign up via the link in my bio, something like that. So that was a feed content, which drove pretty much all the growth. The story content did help with growth because when we would have a piece of content go viral, we would always have, have stories live on the page, meaning that people then would see that we're active and we're giving more value on there and we'd be giving tips as well. The story content also definitely helped push visits to the website and sell products for them which is a big part of why they were very happy. Uh, for context, this client paid $1,200 a month. Some months they paid a lot more for some extra services, but that was the minimum. And they stayed for like 20 months. So you do the maths, they, they paid a lot of money. So we obviously had to make them a lot of money for them to stay that long. The story content, we had like a set schedule, similar to how we had the content calendar. We would use that for stories. And each week we would have a mix of Q and A's. So questions and answers, uh, polls and quizzes. Uh, call to actions for the products, for the fitness challenges, that kind of thing, and um, behind the scenes. So this was pretty much how we did stories. Um, it didn't necessarily grow the page, but it would have helped facilitate some of the growth. The strategy we used for DMs, because the page was quite big, we got a lot of inbound DMs. So we never did outbound DMs. You'll see what I mean by that in the appointment settings section, but we never messaged people that watched the stories or followed us because the page was just so big. We really didn't need to do that. Uh, we would then direct the inbound leads, the messages, the questions, ideally back to the supplements or fitness challenge. So if it was a question about, hey, you know, I'm struggling to get enough protein, um, what can I do? We might send them over, hey, here's our protein powder. You should try that out. Or if it was, hey, I'm struggling to 
you know, build muscle on a vegan diet, we might say, hey, yeah, you could check out some of our supplements, but we're actually running a fitness challenge in two weeks from now. Here's the link. You can sign up if you want. For Instagram stories, you got three approaches. We used option three, which is around five stories per day. And there you have it, folks. You know, our, our hashtag strategy was nothing crazy. We would use hashtags relevant to the post, but we would not spend much time on it as we've covered previously. Can hashtags help? Yes, they can for sure. And we would use them, but we would just put some at the end of the caption, three to 10, and we would leave it at that. Pretty simple stuff. But the real main thing that you really need to understand from this is the content. The content is what grew. And I said this previously, but the hack you're looking for is good content, content that follows the stuff we've been looking at so far. You might've picked this up from that video, but inside of my agency, I worked with over 355 different businesses. Now, gaining 80,000 followers in three months for one of those clients, that was probably the best result we got. Most of our clients were paying us more for convenience. They know they needed to put time into social media, but they didn't want to put in that time themselves, so they would hire us. And if you've seen a lot of social media marketing or SMA content online, you'll know the biggest struggle for most people is not keeping your clients once they sign on, it's actually getting clients in the first place. The way I've designed my mentorship program is really to focus on those two key areas, because yes, we will focus primarily on getting you clients when you're just a beginner starting off, right? It's the number one thing we can solve for you. But then we will switch and pivot and we'll put a ton of effort into making sure you've good systems, a good team, and really just a predictable way so that when a client comes in, they get results pretty much guaranteed. Currently, I've coached well over 100 people past 5k a month and some upwards of 40 to 45k per month as well. If you go below this video, you will see information on how you can work one-on-one -on -one with me, where I will be personally working with you, helping you either build and start your SMMA or scale it up if you already have one. If you want more info on that, just go down below this video and hopefully this video was helpful.